Here we go as the game is underway. First hockey game I ever saw was the United States beating the USSR, and it was. Um, I was I was intrigued at the time, you know, because here's a sport that's basically foreign to me. But I was just intrigued, obviously, by the story itself, but the excitement surrounding it. And and I remember later on that year, um, you know, you stay up late as a kid, and public television had Wisconsin hockey games. So then all of a sudden, I'm tuning in. Face off. There's your shot, Nicole. Brian Posick has been the voice of Badger hockey since 2002. He got his start calling games in 1984 as a freshman in college at UW-Stevens Point. I reached out to Paul Brown. I reached out to Jack Swanson. I reached out to Pat Foley of the Chicago Blackhawks, Dan Kelly, the late Dan Kelly, the St. Louis Blues, Bruce Martin uh, from the Detroit Red Wings and picked their brain about how do you go about calling hockey games. I mean, I'm so fortunate to be where I am uh, with the names like Bob Miller, and Paul Brown, and I mentioned Jack Swanson. Um, you know, you look at Chuck Caton, uh, Chris Moore, uh, Michael Barr, Mark Strauss. Uh, there have been so many, so many good play-by-play -play announcers here, and uh, I'm still trying to catch up to how good they are. Posick's modesty is only matched by his knowledge, as you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who knows more about Wisconsin hockey. The history of this program is, is just remarkable. And, and to, to go through and find little tidbits of maybe you, you didn't remember or you forgot, uh, it's just fun to just sift through things and learn more and more every day. So the obvious follow-up, what are Posick's most memorable moments calling Badger games? Goal line left, here's Gilbert now. Fumpabelsky, Badger score! Tom Gilbert with a power play goal at 9.32. You know, the national championship, that was the apex of my career. I mean, you know, it's that's something you always wanted to do. An empty net to our right, two seconds left. Shot in front, hit the goal post. I believe Elliot Baby with a save. Ladies and gentlemen, the Badgers have faced the challenge. They've climbed the mountain. They are on top of the college hockey world for the first time in 16 years. The number one is the uh, NCAA regional in Green Bay in 2006. Uh, 111 plus minutes of hockey, 100 shots on goal. Brian Elliott was ridiculous during that stretch run when Wisconsin won nine out of the last 10. He pitched four shutouts in the playoffs and uh, he makes 40 stops in the regional final against Cornell. Dave McKee makes 60 and he needed to make 61. Angle holds his own, here's the shot, they score! Jack Skilly gets the overtime winner! Triple overtime! Oh, baby! And the place went bonkers, and, and off to Milwaukee we go for the Frozen Four. That was number one. Number three might be calling a game at Lambeau Field in 2006. You know, the Frozen Tundra Classic, Shane Connolly in goal, and Badgers beat Ohio State, and Jeff Likens is running and doing a Lambeau leap with his skates still on, and his teammates follow. You know, the Culver's Classic at uh, Camp Randall Stadium. To step on on the wing, Davey steps up, finds Brendan Smith, he fires and scores! When Brendan Smith scored two power play goals in the third, and Wisco beats Michigan in front of 55,000 fans. I mean, that was remarkable. Uh, and probably the first most memorable highlight of me calling games on the radio was in um, it was February of 04. Top-ranked North Dakota's in town. Zach Parisi, Brandon Bochensky, guys like that. And uh, in Wisconsin, you could tell it was building a little bit. And uh, Badgers are down in the third. Robbie Earl had a couple of goals. Andrew Jodry ties it, goes to overtime, and Earl gets a hat trick on a remarkable play. They beat North Dakota 4-3. They sweep the series. Uh, that weekend, and Wisconsin just missed making it to the Frozen Four that year, and lost to Maine in overtime in the regional final in Albany. So, yeah, so those would be my top five. And all those games started the same way for Posick, with hours of homework and a cheat sheet. Yeah, nobody can read it but me, I'm sure. Yeah, it's, there's all kinds of stuff on there. This is something I've done since, since I was back in college, and it's just a little sheet that makes it easy. I can hang on to it instead of putting it down. Wisconsin's always on top, and then the opposing team's on the bottom, and then I just go numerically, and, uh, and then I'll highlight, or I'll color code the lines. I have all their season statistics, uh, maybe their statistics from the year prior, their career stats, how are things going for them now. It's everything I can reference uh, throughout the game, so if something comes up. 
the Wisconsin Badgers getting ready for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish here in South Bend, joined by Wisconsin head coach Tony Granato. It's always fun to come to, to South Bend and play Notre Dame. Your team has played pretty decently since the semester break. There's a few bumps in a row there, but it looks like you're making some progress. For our team, it's about winning battles. It's about putting yourself in a position uh, to be able to, to have a one-on-one -on -one confrontation that you have to come up with the puck, you have to come up with the body position um, to, to be able to beat them and have success against them, and that's what we'll be looking to do this weekend. Just review in your mind what we talked about this morning, the focus on making sure that every battle that's out there, we're ready to commit to battle. Just be committed to battle. We are at beautiful Compton Family Ice Arena in South Bend. O'Leary against Pelton Vice, and the Fighting Irish win the faceoff. Notre Dame averaging 2.2 goals per game in Big Ten play this season. Has a 2-0 lead, and this is not a team you want to fall behind against. Holloway knocks Slagger down. Caulfield coming in. Left wing, he scores! Cole Caulfield charging the net. Left wing ducked his right shoulder and zipped one up high, beating Kale Morris. Badgers on the board. Cole Caulfield is 14th of the year. It's 2-1 now, Notre Dame. It kind of made us calm down a little bit. Uh, it gave us some energy going into the second that we're still in this game. Set it cross ice. Now Notre Dame loses it. Turcotte's got a topo left wing. Looks for Caulfield. He snipes again. What a pass and play by Turcotte setting up Caulfield. He goes short side, glove side, and we are even. Three three game. Three minutes left. Caulfield steps in left circle. Scores. First hat trick of Cole Caulfield's Wisconsin career. He goes top shelf on Kale Morris, and Wisconsin has the lead for three. Vice retrieves Miller. Right side Zimmer steps in top of the circle, shoots and scores. Max Zimmer through traffic from the right wing. His first goal of the season. The senior makes it 5 3 Wisconsin. Right wing, Graham steps in, finds Burke, his shot kicked out by Barry. He ends this penalty kill with a brilliant left pad save. 5-3 Wisconsin, 12-15 left here in South Bend. Barry was really solid. He, he was big in the net. Now Bishel will come off as O'Leary redirects into the Wisconsin zone. 5-4 Badgers lead. Kalna got to the puck all the way down. He scores! A 200-foot empty net goal for the captain. It's all over here in South Bend. The Badgers erase a 2-0 first period lead and beat Notre Dame tonight 6-4. To for every inch of ice, I think that was the hardest we've got. We were going to win that game no matter what. A couple great blocks, a couple great plays. Slogan blocks, Keegan blocks again with them. No there was a different attitude on the bench and a different attitude uh, uh, from our players to say we're finding a way to, to finish this one. You know, I was telling some of the guys in the locker room, you know, we faced a lot of adversity tonight, and, you know, that's the type of stuff we're going to see the rest of the year. So uh, just, you know, if we get down a goal or two goals, you know, we know we can bounce back. And, uh, you know, after tonight, I think we have confidence that we can do that over and over again.